Hi, now I've got a problem here that you might like to try if you haven't tried it already. It's about a box of mass 5 kilograms. It lies on this rough inclined plane that's at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. And the box is held in equilibrium by this horizontal force of magnitude 20 newtons. And the force acts in a vertical plane containing a line of greatest slope of the inclined plane. Now the box is in equilibrium and on the point of moving down the plane. And if we model the box as a particle, now what we've got to find in part A is the magnitude of the normal reaction of the plane on the box, and in part B the coefficient of friction between the box and the plane. Now to do problems like this, first of all we need to put some forces that act on the box. And we can see that we've got this 20 newtons that is pushing into the box here, holding it in equilibrium. Now whenever I get problems where we've got forces pushing into an object, I like to draw them coming out the other side. I feel it makes the problem a lot easier to work with. So what I'm going to do is change that to 20 newtons acting away from the box instead of coming into it. And so I'm going to take that other 20 newtons away. What else have we got acting on the box? Well, we've got the weight. The weight acts downwards. It normally is mg. In this case, the mass is 5 kilograms. So we're going to have 5g, 5g newtons then. There'll also be the reaction. Okay, the reaction from the surface of the inclined plane acting on the box. And that reaction is going to come away from the box like that, perpendicular then, 90 degrees to that surface. I'm going to call that R Newtons. Now, the box is on the point of sliding down the plane. But being a rough plane, friction has to oppose motion. So we've got friction acting up the plane parallel to the slope. And because it's on the point of moving down the plane, as it says here, then that friction is limiting. That means that the friction is equal to mu times r, mu being the coefficient of friction, which we've got to later find out in part b. So we've got the frictional force of mu r newtons acting up the plane. Next we need to put on some angles. And when we're putting on angles, then we should know to put on some dotted lines. Let's put on a dotted line down in this direction. And we'll have one dotted line as well going down the plane. So we set up this kind of cross, perpendicular to the plane and parallel to the plane. And when we have a situation like this, this angle in here is always the same as the angle of the plane. So this is going to be 30 degrees. And then we've got this angle here. That is going to be also 30 degrees. It corresponds with this angle here of 30 degrees. So we've marked on the angles. We've got all the forces now acting on this particle, keeping it in equilibrium. So the next thing we need to do is think about how we're going to get this normal reaction, R. Well, we need to think about resolving, resolving forces perpendicular to the plane. So in part A, we're going to use the letter R then to denote that we're resolving. And the direction that I'm taking as positive is going to be away from the plane, perpendicular to the plane. Now it's up to you whether you want to take perpendicular, that is away from the plane, or if you want to take positive as into the plane. All it's going to affect is the signs that you use here, the pluses or minuses. Okay, But at the end of the day, you should be able to end up with the, exactly the same value for R. So do check it out. Experiment by changing the direction around. But for now, I'm going to look at away from the plane as positive. 
Now when it comes to resolving, we set up this cross here, okay, as you can see. Two of these forces, that's the 20 newtons and the weight 5g newtons, are not forces that are on this cross. The mu r is and the r is, but not the 20 or the 5g. And that means that we need to split these two forces into components. And we'll just mark those in. Normally I don't do this, what you see in a moment. I just visualize it, but I don't draw them on. I just leave the diagram as it is. But we'll mark them on just for the time being. So when it comes to considering the weight here, 5G Newtons, there's going to be a component down the plane. Okay, we'll mark that in like that. And there's going to be one into the plane so that the 5g newtons is in between these two forces. Now that means that we can do away with this weight and think of it as these two forces. Now this force into the plane contains the angle of 30 degrees. This force excludes the angle of 30 degrees. Now when it contains an angle we use cosine when it excludes an angle, we use sine. So this component is 5g cosine of 30 degrees, and that's measured in newtons. This force excludes the 30 degrees, okay? So we write this as 5g sine of 30 degrees, and that's measured in newtons. Now let's take a look now at the 20 Newton force. We can split this into two components. We'll have one has to go up the plane and one goes into the plane. The 20 Newtons has to be in between these two components. So we'll just mark the one up the plane, there we go, and the one down into the plane like so. Now the one that contains the angle, this component here, is going to be cosine of 30. So this one here is going to be 20 cosine of 30 degrees, measured in newtons. This one into the plane is now going to be 20 sine of 30 degrees. And that's twos measured in newtons. So as I said earlier, normally I would not have those components in. I'd leave it as the diagram that you see here. But just think about those components. What we'll do is we'll put those components in though, okay, and do away with the 20 newtons and the weight. So there's our forces acting in that cross situation. So when it comes to resolving, it now should be fairly straightforward. Forces that are perpendicular to the direction that we're resolving, that's these two forces and this force, do not enter the equation. So what we've got now is all of R acting in the positive sense, and then these two forces act in the negative sense, okay, as you can see here. So they're going to be negative 20 sine of 30 degrees and then minus 5g cosine of 30 degrees. And this is the resultant force acting in this direction on the box. And because the box is in equilibrium, this resultant force must be equal to zero. So all we need to do now is just rearrange this to make R the subject. And we can do that by adding these two terms to both sides. So therefore, we end up with R equaling 20 sine of 30 degrees plus 5G times the cosine of 30 degrees. And if we work this out on our calculator, you should find that you end up with 52 point four three five and so on. And if we round this to say three significant figures, that's going to be fifty two point four newtons. 
given to three significant figures, 3SF for short. All right. Now in part B, we've got to find the coefficient of friction. In other words, mu here. And to find that, we consider resolving parallel to the plane. And you can have either up the plane as positive or down the plane as positive. It's up to you. But I'm going to take up the plane as positive because I can see that mu is in this force here. And if I take that direction up the plane as positive, it will keep that term as positive. So, resolving up the plane, we've got mu r, okay, we'll put that in, mu r, and then plus the 20 cos 30, plus 20 cos 30 degrees, and then we've got minus 5g sine 30, 5g sine 30, and this is all the forces that we need. These forces are, and these two forces here, are perpendicular to the direction that we are resolving in. So they have no effect. So this is the resultant force acting on the box parallel to the plane. And that resultant force is equal to zero because it's in equilibrium. So to get mu, all I've got to do is add 5g sine 30 to both sides, subtract 20 cosine of 30 degrees from both sides, that will leave me with mu r. And then to get mu, I would divide all of that answer by r. So if I just write it down here, we've got mu equals, add that term to both sides, so you've got 5g sine of 30 degrees, and then minus the 20 cosine of 30 degrees, and that would leave me with mu r, so I'd need to divide by the r. Now if you work this out, taking g to be 9.8, you end up with mu equaling 0 0.1369, and so on. And so if we round this, say, to three significant figures, then that is equal to 0.1369. 3, 7, to 3 significant figures, 3SF, and there's no units for the coefficient of friction. Okay, so I hope that's given you an idea on that particular problem. As I say, normally I would not write these components in. I would just get rid of them and work with the 20 newtons there and the weight there. That's what my diagram would look like. And I would strongly encourage you to work through this again. See if you can see those components now in this diagram. All right, and uh, hopefully that should do you.